The year of education came about because of informal discussions between professors actively teaching, promoting chromatography, Professor Pat Sandra, University of Ghent, Professor Peter Schoenemakers from the University of Amsterdam, and myself. And we realized that people taking our courses or sending us emails almost on a daily basis asking for help, they had little to no idea, little to no background, and therefore it became essential to start with the fundamentals, including not only the theory, but also the practice, and to use some sort of online, you know, unique, non-biased method of teaching all these essential things. The standard of living of this world depends on separation science. The air we monitor, the water we drink, the food we're involved with, the daily exposure. Chromatography still stands out in my mind as one of the essential, you know, safeguards of human life on this planet period. So the problem is growing both because of the lower level of competence but also the increasing number of instruments being used worldwide. So we have a gap between application, the need to do good analytical measurements and the number of people that are really qualified and competent to perform such analysis. I think of uh, the routine analysis of pesticide in, in foods. Pesticide were both, you know, a double-edged sword, both a blessing, you know, and a threat. There are probably at least 40, 50,000 analysis per day for pesticides in food products, a very essential application of gas chromatography and liquid chromatography. Every now and then there are casualties because of food crisis, and if we wouldn't have chromatography, the food crisis would be spreading across the world. We can contain it and we can avoid many crises by being able to measure the quality of our food. If you have a choice, you go to a hospital, you have a choice, a hospital without a lab, a hospital without a computer, which is the one that you will, would feel safest in. If you have a hospital without a computer, your bill may come a bit later, uh, but you may leave the hospital in better shape. And it is, uh, just the fact that there's a lab where they can measure what's in your blood. But that's what the chemistry is about. That's where the measurements are being taken. It's, it's controlling your health. If they give you any medication, the whole process of developing that medication involves a gigantic amount of analysis, especially chromatography, to make sure it's safe. That the, all these years that a new drug is being developed, that in an amazing number of analytical measurements, and, and we profit from that every time we take medication. The entire field is saying, we need so many people, we can guarantee that you find a job in this field. If, if you look at the demographics of, of the US, of people, the, the, the competent population is aging. So you need to replace your, 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 your competent people. And good people, they find jobs very easily. If you're good at chromatography, there's jobs. And if you're good at analytical chemistry, there's jobs. We're not even close to that. No. The discouraging thing is that the instruments have become uh, more automated, more sophisticated, more reliable, and in the minds of managers, they think, oh, these things are so simple, a high school student could run them. But if you now go to new samples, new analyses, and some of the samples you're trying to work with, concentration, trace analysis of bomb residues, pesticides at very, very low levels in drinking water, automation of sample preparation techniques to handle multiple complex samples, and techniques such as, you know, GC by GC, multidimensional gas chromatography, just offer possibilities of resolution speed of analysis that were not possible a few years ago. These demand skills which were not imparted, you know, correctly at whatever training they received. We need to be more interactive and try to deliver somehow this expertise which we share in the media which is available to a large number of people at a reasonable cost. Uh, I just uh, came out with uh, a new edition published by John Wiley in my textbook called Basic Gas Chromatography. It will nowhere begin to solve the problem because so many students no longer read books. In the modern world, it's a combination of techniques. They would much prefer, you know, a network of systems, computer that they can come on, check on the web, and find answers to specific questions. So it's going to be some type of multimedia education. We still need lectures. 
we still need somebody like Professor Schoonemakers to turn you on to how important chromatography is, but then you need some kind of media to provide those answers to basic material. And we need to demonstrate. We need to show people how to use the proper techniques. We, we need to do things that instead of training the 20 people you were training, that you have 200 people that you can train. And then, yeah, identify some of the obstacles, $3,000 is is a, is a very steep barrier so you need to, to to lower the cost aim for educating an order of magnitude more people in a specific year of education one specific item i can think of is a webinar like you know fundamentals of gas chromatography it would be short maybe 35 40 minutes but just presenting at a level understandable for all level of education but that has to lead on into further levels, higher levels, special techniques. And particularly, I'd like to see a follow-on webinar about, you know, what are the most frequent problems encountered in gas chromatography and what are the solutions? You know, Peter and I have made so many mistakes in our life, we know the things you should not be doing. So I think we could probably, you know, emphasize what you should be doing. Many of them. The <laughs> They're still surprises, aren't they? <laughs> uh. It's no longer sufficient for me to get up and tell you all about the Van Diemter equation when this particular person said, oh, Dr. McNair, can you show me how to use a syringe? They want to know many practical things that they've not been trained on. And it's fairly easy to do that. But in the past, that was in a classroom, in a laboratory, at the university. We're now talking about a much greater number of people who do not have that possibility. And somehow, in this year of education, we have to make some of those interactive, you know, demonstrations, lectures, understanding, answering questions available to this large number of people. Yes, there will be a very strong response from educators to help in this kind of techniques. I'm sure of that. Gas chromatography, of liquid chromatography, of GC mass spectroscopy, of LC mass spectroscopy, and sample preparation are essential. Because this, this field is so gigantic, you need many people to help fill in the bits and pieces. The industry has a great source of expertise already available. And I think if they realize that if by their contribution of some of their scientists' time, they too would benefit. And I'm sure they would begin to eagerly you know, contribute to some kind of interactive training we're talking about. I'm sure of that. We greatly encourage Comedia and John Wiley and Separations Now to help us. Because I can imagine, and Peter had the, just the right point, those students, those users say, I'm worried right now about this problem. If they knew in a webinar that that type of question would be answered, and then you could give a website going back providing additional information, and maybe even a couple of pages of a book, and saying, here it is, that's where you can find the source, but right now the simple answer is you need to do A and then B and then C. The students will be happy, and they will use the web, and they will go find the information.